2003. Back when Amazon was little more than a glorified bookstore, and when Netflix and Chill had to order a DVD on Netflix and wait for it to arrive in the post. 2003 was the year before prevalent online video streaming, and although there were sites and programs like Napster and LimeWire which allowed you to download music and videos, they weren't exactly legal. The only real way to easily access films and TV at the time was go to a video rental store and rent a VHS tape or a DVD. That, or just buy the video outright. Apart from the lack of streaming, not everyone had a phone that they could use as a portable media player to watch videos. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button. YouTube said that most people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. If you think you are subscribed, don't forget to check. YouTube has this bug that unsubscribe people from channels that they are subscribed to. So let's get back to the video. Video game consoles have had a lot of accessories throughout the years. So what about for watching videos on a portable console such as the Game Boy Advance? You're probably aware that in the West, the Nintendo GBA had special cartridges released in 2004 that featured low resolution TV show episodes. In Japan, however, Game Boy Advance video did not exist. They said they had their own system of playing videos in the Game Boy Advance. This technology is apparently so unheard of in the West, and like for the Western Game Boy Advance cartridges, Wikipedia doesn't even have an article for the Japanese counterparts. In Japan, in 2003, AIM-3 created their own system for playing videos on the Game Boy Advance, a whole year before the Game Boy Advance cartridges in the West were released. This system is called Advance Video, which admittedly has a name very similar to Game Boy Advance Video. AIM-3 system used a specially designed cartridge that could play videos off of a standard smart media card inserted into a slot on the side. These cards could be purchased either with content already on them, or as blank cards which could be taken to a kiosk to have an episode written to them. There were also packages that included both the adapter as well as the card, or you could buy your cards and adapter separately. After you watched a video, you could keep the card to re-watch the video later, or you could use a kiosk to rewrite the card with the new video. Something interesting to note about these cards is that they are partially transparent. These cards can hold up to 24 minutes of animated content on a standard 32 megabyte card, or 102 minutes on a 256 megabyte card. The videos are compressed using a proprietary video compression technology, developed in conjunction by Act Image of France, as well as the Magica Corporation, which is also known for HD cam compression. Four titles were available for launch in May 2003, and the adapter was available for 3200 yen. To use the kiosks to rewrite cards, it would cost you between 100 yen and 500 yen, depending on what exactly you wanted to write to the card. To purchase a new blank card, it would cost you around 1800 yen. These kiosks were called Advanced Catcher, and were designed to be able to be set up in convenience stores and toy shops. This system was similar to the kiosks set up to allow people in Japan to write Famicom Disk System games onto discs. AM3 planned to set up over 10,000 of these smart media copying machines in Japan by the summer of 2005. These systems were distributed in conjunction with Happy Net Co. A large number of anime titles were made available. The original series announced to be distributed were Detective Conan and Time Broken. These were all available on pre written cards, with the first episode of Detective Conan, The Roller Coaster Murder, being available in a bundle with the adapter, but only 600 yen more than the cost of the adapter itself. That's a pretty good deal if you ask me, considering you get just a blank card will set you back 1800 yen. With the initial release, you're also paying for the novelty of portable videos. Hasbro's Video Now also launched 2003. Although the Video Now discs were available at a lower price point, there were several disadvantages. The original Video Now only worked in black and white, whereas the Advanced Video spotted color. 
the video now player could only be used to watch videos and had no support to play any games. And the video now had a much smaller screen and did not support any kind of writable media. In addition to this, the video now also did not release in Japan. According to the website Folix Sang, a former importer of Japanese products, content for AM3's advanced video was planned to be released in stores on CDs, which could then later be transferred to cards. It isn't known whether any CDs with content were ever made or released. This idea is however contradicted by an article by ASCII Corp, which claims that the content would utilise DRM that tied data to hardware in order to prevent unauthorised copying. This DRM would make it very hard to write content from the smart media cards yourself. This system adopted a special ROM specific ID system recorded for each file, so even if it was copied onto a commercially available smart media card, or even another card with a different video on it, it could not be played. This would be encrypted with DES encryption and use a 128 bit encryption key, which would be recorded into the media ROM and would need to be verified before a video could be played back. Despite this, data from computers and cameras could still be recorded to the memory part, although this likely could not be accessed with the advanced video adapter. When the Western Game Boy Advance video cartridges were released, they used DRM to stop them from being played on the GameCube Game Boy adapter, as the owners of the rights to the television series were worried that users would watch their shows on a bigger screen or even try to record their episodes. AM3's advanced video adapters, however, could work fine in the GameCube Game Boy Adapter. While we are comparing the differences between the two systems, while the Western advanced video cartridges sat flush with the GBA as they were standard sized cartridges, in order to make room for the smart media card slots, the Japanese systems required larger cartridges. The adapter is 55mm long, which is about 1cm less than the original Game Boy cartridge meaning it stuck out of a GBA by 2 cm. Interestingly, as the width of the Game Boy cartridge is also about 55mm, this means that the AIM-3's advanced video cartridge is a perfect square. The player has several functions that can be used whilst playing back video. The system can play and pause using the A button. It can also fast forwards and backwards using the right and left buttons on the D-pad respectively, and by pressing and holding forwards and backwards, you can change between 1x speed, 2x speed, 3x speed and 4x speed. Some material would also support chat menus, although earlier content such as the Detective Bone and Roller Coaster Murder Case did not. Titles such as the Pokemon titles would support basic interactive menus, which allowed the selection of either the main movie or short commercials for other Pokemon movies. The player contains no decoding chip, but instead uses the ARM7 CPU, or the GBA, in conjunction with the specially developed fast video codec to allow for video playback. This allowed the player to be built at a low price point as it did not have to contain any custom chips. Video can be played back at 30 FPS and at a resolution of 240 by 160 pixels, the full resolution of the GBA screen. Lixang also expected a wide range of content to be released for the system, including animated content, aka the anime shows, game and movie trailers, similar to what is available on the Pokemon cards, pictures, music, educational software titles, ebooks, as well as karaoke. This is also backed up by a 2004 GameSpot article which claims that AIM3 was also planning to release other peripherals that would work with different types of media. These included advanced picture for still images, Advanced Music for Music, Advanced Comic for Manga, and Advanced Navi for Maps. According to ASCII, AM3 would release animated content at first, but planned to also release other content such as ebooks, so that the GBA and GBASP could be used for educational materials. Nintendo, however, prohibited the company from using the technology to distribute any games or adult materials. Looking at listings for the smart media player on Amazon.co.jp, which can be found by searching for AIM3 and the category TV games, it can be seen that cards were released for many anime series, including, but not limited to, Eitante Kun, 
Flesh Detective Pokemon, also known as Case Closed Pokemon, Hello Ray's Genius Bakabon, Feyong Shinchan, and Time Pokemon. These releases could have either television series episodes or movies on them. During the time of the Nintendo DS, smart media cards continued to be released with the Nintendo DS branding on the packaging, although they were still the same GBA cartridge design. AIM-3 would go on to release DS Vision, which was a similar concept to the smart media player, except it took microSD slash TF cards and was housed in a special DS cartridge that looked similar to a DS Flash card. The Act Image Codec was announced by Shinji Hashimoto, the executive officer of Square Enix, to also be planned for use in the GBA game Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, which did feature Venice cutscenes. Although from research, I cannot find whether it was in fact this codec used to compress the video using cutscenes, it was likely due to this announcement. In 2005, AIM-3 would also provide Poké Park Advanced Navi at Poké Park, the world's first Pokémon theme park, which was a video utilising the advanced video technology, and could be written free of charge onto a card using an advanced Gashapon system. They also operated a lending system there, where guests could pay 2100 yen to rent a system with the card and movie, 2000 yen being given back to the guest on the system's return. Currently, there does not appear to be much information on the internet about AIM-3 Smart Media Player, or at least it is not easily accessible. Many sites that contain information about the product, such as Licksang.com, are no longer available, and many Western sites do not cover this product as it did not have an international release, unlike Game Boy Advance Video. It is likely that the Smart Media Player was not released internationally due to the success of Game Boy Advance Video, and its much simpler nature of only requiring a cartridge for each video, instead of a bulky adapter with fancy media cards. Some information can be found through listings on sites such as Amazon.co.jp, which is not normally used by people outside of Japan, which makes it hard for people to discover AIM-3's advanced video smart media player. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can get notified when new videos release.